When you talk about wealth, I mean the standard of wealth through all of mankind's history basically has been gold. Yes. That, that's a fair statement, mm -hmm. right? Let, let me start the, by this by saying that life is always a contest between the world and the word. Right. It's a contest, a conflict between the flesh and the spirit. Right? Absolutely. It's two two things. There's the flesh, there's the spirit, yes. there's the word, there's the world. Jesus Christ, and I've said this um, so many times here before, let me never hurts to say this again. If you want to understand Christianity, normal Christianity, if you want to understand Jesus Christ, don't just read, study the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5, yes. 6, and 7, right? And in that, in Matthew 6, Jesus said, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will hold to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Matthew 6, 24, right? The wealth of the world is Satan's great weapon. It is, has always been represented by gold. Yes. Yes. And nowhere in Scripture is the world's go gold more praised than Ophir. Mm -hmm. All right? All through the Old Testament, and even in the New Testament, it talks about the gold of Ophir, which was just considered to be the finest gold, right? In the book of Job, listen to this. It says, if you return to the Almighty, you will be restored. If you remove unrighteousness far from your tent, and place your gold in the dust, and the gold of Ophir among the stones of the brooks. Then the Almighty will be your gold, and choice silver to you. For then you will delight in the Almighty, and lift up your face to God. Job 22, verses 23 to 26. He's saying, if, you know, if, if you are willing to give up the gold of the world, He will become your gold. All right? Persecution and tribulation certainly is an attack on believers, yes. okay? Mm -hmm. and, but we often seem to overlook or minimize the warning of Jesus about the other tactic of the enemy, which I think is perhaps even more dangerous, wealth and riches. Yes. In, the, in, in a parable that you should know, the parable of the sower yes. and the seed, yes. considering the fact that Jesus said that if you don't understand this parable, you're not going to understand any of them, right? Jesus said, And others are the ones on whom the seed was sown among the thorns. These are the ones who have heard the word and the worries of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires for other things enter in and choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. Mark 4, verses 18 and 19. Jesus is warning about this tactic of the, this this weapon of the enemy that's the deceitfulness of riches. Okay? Satan actually thought, and, and that's probably based on his experience with mankind, that the pull of riches was so strong that it could sway even Jesus himself. Oh, because he tried he's that in one of his temptations. In one of the temptations. It says, again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Go, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Satan was a prosperity preacher. Still is. He's the first one, right? What do you think he said to, to, to the woman in the garden? When he's saying, Hey, just eat the, the fruit that Jesus, you know, that God said, Don't eat. And you'll have this. You'll be like God. All right? There's so much warning in Scripture about riches, the desire for riches, all right? It's a desire. It says that the love of money is a root of all sorts of evil, all right? Paul wrote to the Colossians. He said to the Colossians, For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Therefore, consider the members of your earthly body as dead, to immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and listen, and greed, which amounts to idolatry. He said, make sure you read that to the lay of the scenes. You know that this is so true because of the fact that if you ask anybody, 
you know, what they answer to, any problem they have in money. their life, it's money. Money, money, money. That's their first it is. line. That's why you okay. understand when Jesus said you can't serve two masters, God and mammon, and mammon is, you know, worldly wealth. Right, right. right? And, and by the way, you know, we, we've done a study on the Sermon on the Mount, which is available on our website here, by the way. But it's, it's important to understand that people think that money will serve them. Jesus said, slave. it's the other way around. You can't serve two masters because money will be your master. You'll wind up serving the money, not the other way around. All right? Okay. Paul also taught Timothy, his son in the faith, and instructed him what he was taught to pass along to others. Right? And he said, but those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a snare, yes. and many foolish and harmful desires which plunge men into ruin and destruction. Mm. For the love of money is a root of all sorts of evil, and some by longing for it have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Mm. But flee from these things, you men of God, and pursue <coughs> righteousness, godliness, faith, perseverance, and gentleness. 1 Timothy 6, 9 through 11. You see, he's saying that this is a tactic that causes people to fall away from the faith. And if you fall away from the faith, you're dead for eternity. It's not like your body just got killed and wow, you're present with the Lord. You're dead for eternity. Though the earth shall move and change And the mountain move to the sea I shall not be afraid The Lord of hosts is with me Be still and know that I am God